Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that talks about how to build a large distributed system that has overall low latency in spite of its constituent components having occasionally slow latency. The authors are Jeff Dean and Luis Andre Barroso from Google and full disclosure, I work at Google too. And this paper was published in the communications of the ACM in 2013. So let's start by talking about the motivation. Why is this even a problem? It is a very common pattern in distributed systems to parallelize your request by fanning it out to a number of other servers. And this way you can parallelize your request and get back an answer quickly. The problem is that all these servers that are servicing these fanned out requests have their own latency distributions. And these get magnified when you take all these results together to compose your final answer. The authors use a very simple example here. Imagine a system where you're fanning out to servers that respond in 10 milliseconds 99% of the time but the remaining 1% of requests take as long as one second. And if you fan out a request to 100 servers with this kind of latency distribution, your overall latency is going to be greater than one second in 63% of the cases. So this just goes to show that even if you fan out to servers that have a very good latency distribution, just that extreme tail latency gets magnified when you compose your answers and reply. And the central problem that this paper is looking at is how to clip that tail latency, how to get an overall system latency that is fast in spite of the constituent components having some large tail latency. So stepping back, you might ask, why does this variability in response times even exist? Where is this variability coming from? There are several sources of this latency variation. These machines are large server machines and a lot of different applications share the resources on them. And this can lead to contention for these resources. You have various demons on these machines that kick in every now and then. And a lot of the distributed applications that run on these servers have a range of periodic background tasks, such as data compaction or garbage collection. Those were the software sources of latency. There are also several mechanisms operating at the hardware level that cause variable latency. For example, power throttling on CPUs. So CPUs can run above their power threshold for a while, but then throttling kicks in. We also have solid state storage devices that are usually very fast, but then periodically need to garbage collect their blocks. And when that happens, read latency spikes up. Now let's start looking at the techniques by which you can start reducing your tail latency. One of the first things you can do is to break up your requests into two classes, those that a user is actually waiting for and everything else that is non-interactive. This allows you to prioritize the interactive requests ahead of the others. Another common cause of tail latency is that you're blocked in a queue behind some very expensive requests. One thing you could do is break up these expensive requests into a number of smaller requests, and this would reduce the amount of waiting in queues. You could also schedule your background activities to take place when the overall load on the system is low. Note that the authors are explicitly not taking caching into consideration in this discussion. Unless your entire data set fits in memory, caching is not really an effective solution. You should also remember that getting caching right is highly non-trivial, especially where you have both reads and writes to a cache. It is very easy to end up with all sorts of consistency bugs if you don't get it right. So all those techniques can help bring in your tail latency somewhat, but you still have to live with variability. And now the authors start looking at techniques to live with that variability and try to bring in the tail latency of your overall request. One technique to do that is what they call hedged requests. 
And the idea is to issue the same requests to multiple servers and then use the result that comes back first. When implemented, the way you would do this is that you would first issue a single request to the server that was most appropriate, but after a very short delay, if you haven't gotten back a request, you would issue the same request to another server. And whenever the client gets back a reply, it cancels the other outstanding request. Now you might say, and correctly so, that this would increase the overall load significantly. But you can use heuristics such as issuing the second request only when the first one has been outstanding for more than the 95th percentile latency of this kind of request. The authors have found that this kind of weighting increases the overall load by only about 5% while reducing the tail latency substantially. They provide some data from Bigtable, which is one of the distributed storage systems Google uses. And in one of their benchmarks, using this technique where they waited 10 milliseconds before issuing a second hedge request reduced the 99.9th percentile latency from about 1.8 seconds to 74 milliseconds. And the cost was only about 2% more requests. So you've increased load almost negligibly, but gotten a huge amount of savings in your tail latency. And you can make canceling these hedge requests even faster and more efficient by using a technique that the authors called tied requests. The idea is that when you have two or more outstanding requests for the same thing, you tie them together so that the servers that are trying to service this request know about each other. That way, when one of them begins executing this request, it can tell the other servers to cancel their outstanding requests. Now you'll notice that there's a window of time where a server might start executing a redundant request because the cancellation message is in flight over the network. You can get around this by having the client wait an average of two times the network round trip before issuing the second request. So those were some techniques that you could apply at the level of requests. But you can also do higher level things above the level of requests. You can partition and dynamically load balance your services so that the load is more evenly distributed. And even when you're partitioning, it's very common to have one partition that suddenly becomes hot. And in such cases, you can actually replicate that partition across multiple machines. You can also just keep track of the latencies of the various servers that you're using. And then if you notice that one server has been slow a lot, you can stop sending requests to it or put it on probation for a while. And depending on your application, you could also decide to return a good enough result within a short amount of time rather than waiting a long time for a perfect result. This is very true of search. All right, so that was a quick look at a paper which talks about a collection of techniques which makes your overall application more tolerant of large variances in latency. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.